It's often not the destination which matters most, but what we discover of God and of ourselves on the journey. That's what stays with us and shapes us into fuller people. Ordinary time. Ordinary, yes, but perhaps not quite so ordinary as we softly tread in the footsteps of Jesus. And in the unexpected twists of a well-spun parable and the turns of lives redirected anew towards God, we embrace the adventure, growing taller yet. Hello and welcome to Windows on Worship. My name is Carl and it's wonderful to have you with us, especially if you're joining us for the first time. You're very welcome. This week we're continuing our exploration of Jesus's Sermon on the Plain as Luke's Gospel presents it to us and grappling with some really challenging teaching about loving our enemies in the context of a faith community facing oppression as a result of their faithfulness to Christ. Before we dive into any of that, however, if you've not done so already, you may find it useful to download the sheet that accompanies this act of worship. The link is just below the video in YouTube in the description, but you may need to click on show more in order to reveal it. The front side of the worship sheet has some space for you to make your own notes as we go along, some questions for you to ponder along the way, and various places where you're invited to share your thoughts and prayers with others in the comments section, particularly if you're watching the premiere and can use the live chat function in YouTube. The reverse side of the worship sheet contains the jukebox playlist, a set of YouTube videos chosen especially to help you go further in your praying and pondering through the week. And so as we gather together before God in our different places, using the gift of technology, we bring our opening prayer for ordinary time. The words of this prayer, and indeed the words of all the prayers and responses we'll be sharing in together today, will be on the screen. Please join in with those words in yellow and bold type, either in your head or out loud, as you're most comfortable. Let us pray. God of adventure and growth, open our hearts, ready our minds, and fire our imaginations, so that as we gather together before you, use technology to connect with each other, and ponder the life-giving stories of Jesus, we might discover more of your goodness and be swept up by the Holy Spirit as she nurtures, disturbs and inspires us on our journey into fullness of life. Amen. Each week on Windows on Worship we offer a starter for 10 question that's there to get you thinking about the theme for the week. You may want to share your response to this question with others, either in the main comments or the live chat, or you may just want to ponder it quietly to yourself and that's fine too. So this week's starter for 10 is, think of a time when somebody else helped you out without expecting anything in return. How did this make you feel and why?
We come then to our prayers of thanks and praise. During this time, if there's something that you want to share with others as a thanksgiving, do type that into the main comments or the live chat. Let us pray. Merciful and gracious God, you call us to embody your incomprehensible love, which turns our ideas about what it means to be human upside down and inside out. You equip us and strengthen us through your Holy Spirit so that we can do good, share blessings and offer prayers, even in the hardest and most adverse of circumstances. Following the example of your Son, Jesus Christ, you call us to seek forgiveness over revenge, new beginnings over being stuck in unjust ways of being, and hope in the midst of the darkness that comes before dawn. We thank you that you invite us to embrace kingdom life, always offering us the opportunity to begin again with you, and comforting and upholding us when we have been hurt. Merciful and gracious God, receive our thanks and praises. Amen. Our psalm that's set for this week is Psalm 37, specifically verses 1 to 11. Let us pray. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only leads to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land, and delight in abundant prosperity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We come now then, friends, to our prayers of renewal, knowing that there's much in our own lives and in the life of our world in need of God's restoration and transformation. For our prayers this week, we're going to use a hymn, Lord, we turn to you for mercy, as a prompt for our prayers. And at the end of the hymn, we'll bring all that we've thought about and prayed about together in a short response. Let us pray. Your forgiveness lifts 
God of all goodness and blessing. Thank you that you forgive us, restore us and equip us to be your disciples. Amen. Our reading for this week comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. As you hear it read, keep your ear open for any particular words or phrases or ideas that jump out at you. You may wish to make a note of them in the space provided on the worship sheet, because these could point to the things God's Holy Spirit particularly wants to say to you today through this reading. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. The late political commentator and atheist writer Christopher Hitchens once caused a great deal of controversy with his remarks in relation to Islamic terrorism and the injunction in both Matthew and Luke's Gospels to love our enemies. He wrote, Love your enemies. There's another immoral injunction. My enemies are the theocratic fascists. I do not love them. I want to destroy them. His Powerful comments highlight some of the tensions that we might encounter as we seek to apply Jesus' teaching from today's Gospel passage. The disciples to whom Jesus spoke on that level place, on that plane, were called to love their enemies, which meant doing good to them, blessing them and praying for them. They were to move beyond wider cultural ideas about relationships being reciprocal, which shaped so much of the Greek and Roman culture of the day. And thus they were to love others and seek good for them and lend to them without expecting anything back in return. Embracing forgiveness while not judging or condemning other people and giving generously to those who beg also formed a part of this picture that Luke gradually builds up for us about what it means to be merciful, just as God the Father is merciful. Now, the vision that emerges here is a highly countercultural one, 
It has been branded unrealistic and naive by some, and one commentary I looked at described it as, quote, incomprehensible. And so it begs the question, what are we to make of this challenging text? And how might we respond to people who share Christopher Hitchens' scepticism about this difficult teaching? The context, as I've already hinted, of these sayings of Jesus is that of the Sermon on the Plain, which we began looking at last week when we examined the four blessings and four woes with which it begins. Within Hebrew thought, plains or level places were ambiguous spaces, in that on the one hand they were associated with desolation, but on the other there were places from which God's salvation would come. And it might remind us of our living in the now but not yet of the kingdom of God that Jesus was embodying and proclaiming. The imagery that Jesus uses here would have resonated powerfully, I think, with Luke's predominantly Gentile faith community, as they dealt with hostility from all sides, from some of the Jewish religious authorities and from the occupying Roman secular powers. Yet they were holding on to the hope in Christ that they had embraced. And Jesus was calling them thus to respond to what they found around them with non-violence, meeting the hatred and abuses they suffered with love and blessings and prayers and a seeking of the practical good of the other. As Jesus said in the final verse of our reading for today, the kingdom rewards for all of this would be great, even as the present experience at the hands of those described therein as ungrateful and wicked would no doubt be difficult. In short, the hope that they had received in Jesus Christ meant that they were tasked in turn with exemplifying the life of the kingdom of God and thus pointing to a radically different way to be, even down to giving of themselves without expecting to receive anything in return. Now, interestingly, we don't get to hear how the disciples, and indeed the wider crowds gathered around Jesus, responded to all of this. But I can imagine, given how challenging, how countercultural, how indeed incomprehensible some of these things were, that they would have found it pretty daunting indeed. And in that particular context, it was a lot to ask of Luke's faith community. For us today, as readers who come to this text in a quite different sort of situation, not facing, on the whole, the same kind of hostility that Luke's community faced for their faithfulness to Christ, we may nonetheless find these words rather daunting as well. And moreover, in today's world, I think they do need to come with something of a health warning attached. For example, Jesus was not saying, definitely not saying, that those who find themselves in abusive situations should remain with their abuser, or that pressure should be placed upon survivors of abuse to forgive the people who hurt them, with the kind of threat of not being forgiven by God themselves, working in the background. Not putting ourselves in danger, be that physical, sexual or psychological danger, is eminently sensible and no way does it represent some kind of failure of faith or spirituality, no matter what some particular pastors might say in their misguided interpretations of such texts. The passage illuminates, I think, the real importance given what I've just said, of putting the readings that we grapple with week by week into their proper context, rather than just plucking out verses here and there and weaponising them for our own ends. As one of my theological college tutors once said, a text without a context is a pretext. And moreover, given what we do actually know about the original setting, it's interesting that Luke included that particular line about turn the other cheek. And that was not about, as it's sometimes cast, 
being a, a doormat, letting people walk all over us. But actually it was an act of defiance because the turning of the other cheek meant that if your oppressor was going to strike you again, instead of being able to do it in a backhanded kind of a way, like you would if you were disciplining a servant in, in that setting, they would have to instead strike you as an equal. So it was, it was defying repressive authority. It was not allowing it to walk all over one. And the presence of that particular verse in the context of instructions about loving our enemies and doing good to them and praying for them and blessing them reveals that there's very little that's actually straightforward here. It's as if in bringing all of these sayings together that Luke is wrestling with what does this look like? What does this actually mean? And thus it's unsurprising that debates continue on subjects like just war theory that have historically drawn upon this passage to guide their thinking. So I don't think there are any easy answers when asking the question, what are we to make of this reading for today? And against the backdrop of the things that we've been thinking about, perhaps the best that we can do here, perhaps the most honest thing we can do here, is to commit ourselves to continuing to wrestle with things like the Sermon on the Plain, and to explore an approach to dealing with oppression based upon non-violence and what that actually looks like in practice. The fact is, friends, that much prayer is needed if we're going to grapple with what Luke's Jesus is saying to us here. And in particular, the thorny issues of forgiveness and loving enemies. After all, what Christopher Hitchens said resonated with so many people because he was far from alone in being sceptical about some of the teaching in the Sermon on the Plain. And undoubtedly it does raise really tough questions when we engage with real life situations. To add to that, as a society, we're not always very good in dealing with forgiveness as an issue generally. Sometimes it, it can be very difficult to, to not seek revenge. And indeed, some people who've come out after traumatic events and said, I forgive, those people who've done those things have met with hostility for offering that forgiveness as if revenge and a punitive response is the only sane, rational way of behaving. It brings us back to the thought that what we find here in Luke's Gospel is deeply countercultural. It's incomprehensible given normal everyday values. But belonging to the kingdom of God is, after all, about embracing a radically different way of being, a way of being that is countercultural, that turns our conventional views upside down and inside out. And so we should probably expect to find ourselves really challenged when we grapple with passages like this and do our best to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ in 2022. I thus invite you to take some time and space in this coming week to ponder this passage in more depth, to pray with it and to wrestle with it and to see what emerges for you, what the Holy Spirit says to you through this reading. And thus, hopefully, to make a step further on the journey of embracing that world-changing, countercultural, incomprehensible vision that Jesus embodied and taught. After all, difficult to grapple with as this is, it is laid out for us as the way of the kingdom of God. And ultimately, the way that results in returns for us who put these difficult things into practice way beyond what we put in in the first place. So I pray that you will find this time of grappling in the coming week fruitful. Amen. Each week on Windows on Worship, we suggest a resource that you may find helpful as you seek to go deeper in your praying and pondering. This week's resource is a book from 2016 detailing some of the stories involved in the Forgiveness Project. This was a project that collected stories from those who have been victims of crime and those who have been perpetrators. And it encourages us to grapple with questions around forgiveness and overcoming the desire for revenge. It isn't an easy read by any stretch of the imagination, 
but it does grapple some with some really important themes and take forward what we've been thinking about today. So that's the Forgiveness Project. We come now then, friends, to our prayers of intercession, our prayers for others. During this time, if there's something you'd like prayer for, do type your request into the main comments or the live chat and the Windows and Worship team will pick that up for you. But as usual, if you're going to reference a particular individual, please just use their initials. During this time, a series of images will appear on the screen as prompts for prayer. And as you look at these and listen to the quiet music, you're invited to bring your prayers for God's world in this time. Let us pray. And so we bring together all that we've been thinking about and praying about today in the words of the Lord's Prayer, using whatever formal language is most familiar to us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So thank you for joining us for Windows on Worship today. I hope you found this act of worship helpful and thought-provoking. If you'd like to follow Windows on Worship and you're not already a subscriber, do hit the subscribe button that will pop up in the middle of the screen towards the end of this video. A link to the jukebox playlist that I mentioned right at the beginning will also pop up towards the end. And on the worship sheet, you'll find 
the links from the jukebox playlist, some Bible study questions to help you go deeper in your praying and pondering, and a reminder of this week's suggested resource. But for now, as our time together draws to its close for another week, a prayer of blessing. God of all our journeys, as we go forward into the rest of the week, may you be the light to our path and the breath we breathe. And may the blessing of the Father, the Son and the Spirit be with us and those whom we love and pray for now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.